Recording in progress. Hello, I am here today with Andy Edwards, the Rick Beato of the Midlands. Hi, Andy. And Hello, Joe. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. We're doing this experimental um, Zoom recording here. Yep. Oh, it's the first time you've done this, isn't it? And it's my first time doing a uh, chat like this, yes, via Zoom that's going to go up. And uh, very, very exciting. Very it exciting. is very exciting. We're going to we're going to uh, talk about. See, I feel like I've already gone into like my TV presenter mode as well. So that's a thing I'm working on. I like that. it. I, I think I think you've. It's a good TV presenter mode. Um, yeah, I I'm going to go off. Topic. We were just we were just chatting, weren't we? Literally just chatting now. Yeah, and we got onto such an interesting topic, and we were like, Let, let's let's just go for it. So anyone who's watching, if we it. haven't planned any of this, we've only just come up with the idea of what we're going to chat about. Off, so off the very, you cuff. want to introduce our topic of discussion for today? I will. I'm going to introduce and maybe introduce who I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like you to introduce yourself, maybe, and because you can give a lot more. Uh, That's a probably good detail. idea. So, uh, Andy, but I, I, I know Andy because I've been following his channel for quite some time, and Andy is like an encyclopedic. Uh, resource on well he talks about prog rock but i suspect actually uh, andy knows everything about music there is to know pretty much but he seems to have like a a, a vast knowledge uh and has accumulated this this kind of detailed i think understanding of stuff and, and also remembers details of records because i don't remember the name of half the songs i know and uh so andy's got that sort of uh deep knowledge of things which also uh combined with a sort of natural flair for being a raconteur uh in, it leads to some very engaging uh music related videos so that's my introduction and high recommendation of your channel andy well that's very kind um i think uh, uh i am a drummer as well and and a I've drummer been a professional drummer for about 30 Who's years going to slag off my molar later then. on um, my YouTube channel sort of came out of nowhere, and that's a, a, a big thing about what I do now, you know, um, professionally is uh, I still play, I still play in bands, I still, I teach a lot of drums, I'm a drum educator, but also, you know, get to talk about um, all aspects about music on the YouTube, it's very exciting, and uh, um, I've been giving Joe here a couple of lessons, mainly more about YouTubing and stuff like that, and we've been getting into some really interesting discussions parallel discussions about drumming and the drum world and all sorts of things so uh i'm I'm really looking forward to this conversation we can, we can release your inner drum nerd now which is i guess yeah i never get to do that on my channel I, I try not to actually i try not to get into all the drum nerdy yeah. side of things uh because my fan base i suppose i think there's a few drummers there but on the whole um it's more like jazz fusion fans prog fans classic rock music fans um so i am really looking forward to talk drums today yeah so so classic rock classic rock is is kind of the topic isn't it and and i guess the the topic that uh you know we started talking about this morning and we decided to record is going to be uh why does everybody bang on about bonham i mean or well my my thumbnail that i'm thinking about is you know uh why i don't talk about john bonham and um I'm, you know, I, 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 there's a lot I have to say about that because I feel like that we're we're throttled in some way in our appreciation of music, and this is to do with the drumming community as far as I've seen it. And um, you know, I, I, I'm sort of guessing this must exist similarly in other musical uh, pursuits. In like the guitarists and pianists probably also have their same uh, phenomena. But there's a there's a there's a tendency to like really lionize certain characters to such a disproportionate effect so uh that's that's the kind of thing that that i want to bring up because it, it sort of irritates me and i feel like it stifles our appreciation of the broader art of drumming because every single conversation about drumming seems to involve john bonham and it doesn't matter if you're and i can't remember any of but you know you can be reading an interview by some like hotshot bebop drummer or whatever who then goes oh yeah and i love john bonham you know, well, where does that come from? John Bonham this, John Bonham that, blah, blah, blah. And okay, let's throw it out there. Personally, I don't care about John Bonham. I've got nothing against the guy. Uh, he plays all right. He's a sort of version of Carmine Apice or Apici. And that's fine. And if you enjoy listening to John Bonham and, and his sort of all right band, I suppose, with some good riffs, um, that's okay. But how has a character like that come to basically dominate every single conversation about drummers. That's that's the big thing. So I have no issue with the man or his 
musical creativity. It's more of like, why do we worship these characters to such a an extent when you have uh, like Simon Kirk, I'm, I'm a bit obsessed with at the moment, who again, does nothing I can really put my fingers on, but it's just the most beautiful drummer, uh, Ian Pace of that period, you know, Mitch Mitchell of that period, people that really excite me and, and, and they hardly get talked about in the drumming community uh, because everybody's obsessed with this guy playing some triplets that some jazz guy in the 50s already did a lot better. Um, yeah, what's this about, Andy? Your your uh, dialectical well, I've got to, I've got to stake my claim in it in that for about three years of my life, I I um I played for Robert Plant, and for some of those gigs, I actually did gigs with Robert Plant on one of John Bonham's uh, kits. You know, channeling yeah. the whole Bonham. It's like a magical working almost. Yeah, it's it's and and it's and because of that, you know, if I get in the room of drummers and I tell them I used to. Well, for a couple of gigs at least, I had one of Bonham's kits, and I was playing it. It's it's like the Holy Grail. It's literally like the Holy Grail, and everyone can't believe that that you've sort of had that connection yeah. with, with him. Um, also, it was actually quite difficult for me when I was playing with Robert because, on the one side, Robert was really aware of the whole um, myth around John Bonham, and he felt rightly that the last thing I should ever do is start channeling that way of playing and yeah. just to stay away from it. And he was right. And yet continually you got compared to Bonham. And for me, once you're playing with Robert, you realize that he's had like um like Richie Hayward from Little Feet's drum for him. He's yeah, had but... Bill Collins drum for him, Cozy Powell drum for him. And you suddenly yeah. realize a huge weight of incredible players he's got. And yet none of them mean anything. Yeah. It's John Bonham. And so yeah. it, 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 people talk to you like you you should be bowing down to John Bonham because you play for Robert Plant. So, uh, yeah, I've had a dose of it. I, I also live um, in the same area where Bonham came from. He's buried literally five minutes up the road from here. So, yeah. so I live in Led Zeppelin country. You know, I'm a huge Led Zeppelin. So I couldn't have picked a worse person to have this conversation with. Well, it's, it, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this because I think you have a point. Yeah. How much does this stifle the conversation? And I'll give you an example. I've got plenty of stu uh, plenty uh, students I teach drums to, which they're very good drummers. I get to them so, to a certain point. And yet when I try and take them beyond that, say towards Latin drumming or jazz drumming or funk drumming or express yeah. themselves around a kit melodically, they're stuck because their favorite drummer is John Bonham. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's they don't, they really don't want to let go of, of that music in a way as well, because that's uh that's our kind of uh, colonial legacy of, of which again, I love rock music. I love classic rock music. I like real music played by actual musicians and so on. But I love Ayeto. I love uh, Eric Kiri. I love, you know, lots of Cuban and Brazilian artists, uh, you know, reggae and all of that sort of stuff. And only, only some of that bleeds into our culture and it's a shame we're missing out. So yeah, within the sort of context of um, just, you know, and I, okay, let's, let's really like stick my neck out. Piet, Kola Yuta, Bonham, right? You've got this like holy trinity of uh, characters that are worshipped to this ridiculous degree. I think that educationally it's stifling because yeah, it, it's, it narrows our focus a little bit. Uh, I think the focus on... I was, I'm going to say this is a bit contradictory because some of it is to do with this like perceived technical awesomeness, but John yeah. Bonham doesn't have any. That, that's going to um, be the but, real killer thing for us to to yeah. uh, to because I'm 100 percent with you here. Yeah, I don't I don't see John Bonham as being technically any no. superior, which is no problem because all my favorite drummers, drummers are non-technical in some ways, right? And again, I, I think we touched on this before, but Levon, Ringo, and so on, they did have some sort of like blistering technique in some areas, but by the standards that we would consider today, or judging against like some of those hotshot jazz guys, uh, the technique isn't on the same level. And technique is to me, and it, yeah, but we sort of I think we have a slightly different perspective, but to me, technique is is secondary, it's a very useful skill to have. Um and I think every individual musician wants to, uh, well, it's not for me to say what an individual musician should do, but I think it's a positive thing in general to aspire to improve one's physical facility with the instrument. Um, but if I look at Vinnie Kolayuta as a model for like what I should be playing, I just want to chop my hands off. You know, there's no thingy. Now that's again, not, I'm not saying anything about, you know, a beautiful drummer who's like, and I, you know, I, I do admire these people who've got that much uh, attention and uh 
whatever whatever it takes yeah. to do that eight hours of practice every day or whatever. I've got no issue with that at all. <laughs> I want to be very emphatic. I'm not having a go at anyone. I'm just saying we're as 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 teachers, as drummers, as musicians, we're so fixated on these particular characters. So I'm uh, sorry, I'll bring I'll bring it back to, to Bonham then, because it is it, it's it's a particular yeah. uh, phenomenon. So when you're talking about uh yeah, again, on the technical side of it, for instance, so how do we get a scenario where even again People who are like amazing jazz drummers will do an interview like Modern Drummer or something and then go on about how Bonham is an influence. Is that a sort of um, a sheeple type of needing to follow the the herd kind of thing? They feel obliged to say that or, you know, are we, is that, is that well, a tinfoil? Well, I, I, before, before we get all iconoclastic, mm-hmm. which I, I really want to do and anyone watching <laughs> this, we're going to get iconoclastic. We are going to question this whole Bonham myth, I think. But let's put an argument for why we, why, what I, what I think it exists. Yeah, I think Bonham was a very good rock drummer amongst a whole host of incredible rock drummers that were emerging in the late sixties: John Heisman, uh, Mitch Mitchell, uh, Ginger Baker, um, Oof, um, Ginger Baker, oh. Simon Kirk, oh. Ian Pace. There's a yeah. whole bunch of drummers emerging in the in the um, that they're, they're pioneers. Bonham's not an originator. He, I mean, you 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 screw your nose up at Ginger, but Ginger's yeah. a full-on jazz big band drummer who is yeah. pioneering rock drumming. And I think we cream, we have the blueprint for a rock drummer, rock band, you know. Um, and Bonham comes out of that. Um, if you listen to, say, Jeff Beck's albums, Truth and Bacola, is it Nicky Hopkins on drums or is he the keyboard? Who's the drummer in that? See, we can't even think of these guys. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not a fan with the Jeff Beck's that I, I'm, I'm Off the to top of my head, there's two drummers on both of those albums that are doing the same type of thing before Zep, yeah. right? And we can't even think of their names. Yeah. The big difference, I think, with Zeppelin was Jimmy Page's production. Yeah. The Jimmy Page had spent the whole of the 60s, you know, interested in production. He moves the mics off the kit. And suddenly on that first Zep album, and it's something no one ever mentions, is you suddenly have this incredible drum sound. Yeah. And Bonham's playing great. Bonham's doing stuff, but he's he's doing stuff that all the other guys are doing, but suddenly you can hear it and it's clear and it's loud and it's big. Yeah. Um, my my mate Bev Bevan, you know, who is a really good friend of mine, Bev was doing the heavy drum sound. He was doing the low tuning, the big drums, way, way before Bonham. And in fact, yeah. um, John knew Bev. And had copped a little bit of that from Bev. But I think the one thing that's never mentioned is the fact of the production, that there is something absolutely unique about the way Bonham's yeah. drum recorded. There, there is a sound to, to Zeppelin. Yes. Yeah, which is, the, the, and, and I think, you know, especially people, when everything was being made more sort of dry and contained during the 70s, there was more studio control. And then you had this. Yeah, very, very big sound, which which to some extent, though, Deep Purple, uh, you know, in the hotel in Montreux or whatever, um, achieved quite a big roomy sound. But yeah, it doesn't really compare. It doesn't. It, I mean, the, it's, I mean, by the mid-70s, if you them. listen to um, Cozy Powell's drum sound on Rising, Rainbow Rising, it's uh, uh, as incredible. But, you know, Bonham's there first. That it, What I'm saying, it's not Bonham that's there, there first. It's Jimmy Page's production yeah. and the presentation. I, I think um, Led Zeppelin, uh, you know, and I know Robert, but I think Led Zeppelin are not original on that first album. Beyond yeah. the production and the and their image, the, there's a whole bunch of other aspects. I think by Led Zeppelin three, and they bring in that sort of incredible string band folk aspect to it. The band, yeah. then they then they are they're innovative, but I think in terms of Bonham. It was a big drum sound in your face. And I think there's a whole generation that, you know, bought into that. Yeah. So I think what we're left with is if anybody picks up the sticks, right, and starts playing and they're listening to whoever they like, at some point they're going to hear a Led Zeppelin song. Yeah. And Bonham is is one of those drummers, if you're 12 years old, where you go, oh, my God, this guy's doing something really interesting. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna. You're not gonna get into Elvin Jones or Tony Williams when you're twelve. No, it's it's. He's the gateway for me. He really but was. Grohl you know, now. I, I, I was listening Hawkins. to a whole host of drummers, and I think um, for me when I came up, it was it was um, it was Bonham's right foot. You know, I heard what he was doing. I can I can yeah. remember. I was listening to ACDC. I was trying to nail all those rock beats, and I got them down, and I'd realised that the bass drum was 
was independent to the hands that you sort of held this thing down and then you played against it with your right foot and that I was nailing that and I was listening to Rainbow and White Snake I was nailing all that yeah and then I heard Led Zeppelin and it was like oh my god how, this is insane okay and that's the thing that happens when you're a little kid I mean I was listening to Phil Collins when I was a little kid and so anything you know I mean that's just amazing drama for me and then I went into listening to a lot of jazz and so on so like classic rock I know the like the did, main... you, did you not have the um the Led Zeppelin awakening then like me no no just my we had the album uh I think Led Zeppelin 3 I think the album cover had a sort of slidey thing yeah, if I Zeppelin remember three, yeah, I think that's... that's three and that had immigrant song on it which yeah. I liked and I remember listening and again we had a kind of large collection of vinyl at home I remember listening to that once maybe and and it registered no nothing of interest to me but my background is in in sort of listening to R and B music, uh, yeah. like real R and B. So uh, Chuck Berry uh, turns into rock and roll, but from Muddy Waters through the whole evolution of rock and roll, and so it's um, I don't know. Do we call this the uh, black music of the United States? Um, that's where my background is. So a lot of the British rock bands at the time to me just sounded like hokey people trying to play the blues not very well. Well, this um, might be another thing with Bonham to, you know, before I get iconoclastic, this might mm -hmm. be another thing that I can champion him on that, you know, A, he is a great summation of what those 60s rock but drummers has pioneered. That's the first thing I'd say. I'm not, I don't think he's an originator, but he's mm -hmm. a very good example of it. Ian Pace is another great example of it, for yeah, example. Yeah, Ian Pace, that's the thing, As a, to compare drummers there, I wouldn't even compare the two. Ian Pace is um, magnificent. I, I, I feel that with Bonham, the... It, the drum sound is phenomenal yeah. and even to this day it's become it, it's a certain type of drum sound which is now iconic yeah. I, I i think that but that's jimmy you know, page with bottom, I, would which I didn't realize jimmy page was good at something but okay i didn't realize was the, the uh the other thing i would argue is that one of the extra factors that bonham had which the other guys didn't was that he had come through the very stuff that you just described so he'd yeah. come up through that rhythm and blues and he was channeling a lot of those types of beats into rock music. Mm -hmm. And the thing I love about Bonham to this day is he's very clever in the, the way he arranges his beats. And that's come from, you know, black rhythm and blues drummers. Yeah, it's playing. It's even a bunch of James Brown drummers. stuff played heavy. Uh, yeah. A lot of John Bonham stuff, isn't it? I mean, it's like, so, you know, every drummer in the world has tried to play the opening of rock and roll, for example. Yeah. That's a direct Little lift Richard. from... Uh, is it Little Earl Richard? Palmer, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think it is Earl Palmer, actually. I think I can't remember the name of the drummer that did that. It's a direct lift. Yeah. And it's cool because it does something that Bonham does a lot. Is It's um, it's displaced. Yeah. So the pattern is, is off on the other side. It's syncopated. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a big thing I got from Bonham was the way he would he would do a fill. And rather than crash on the one, he would crash on the end of two, or he, he would start a beat up not on the one. And he would it, it sometimes, I think his phrasing in beats is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a lot of that's got to do with the fact that Led Zeppelin, Jimmy Page, and Robert Plant being so squeaky <laughs> sonically yeah. allows Bonham to come and fill the space up. Um, I can remember I mean, this is another thing as a band, and they don't sound like a very cohesive band. I mean, it's just like I don't understand anything about you know, and again, everybody can like what they want to like, and yeah. you like things I don't like, and I like things that you don't like, or whatever. That's all cool. I, I just don't, you know, I, I understand Led Zeppelin were kind of turned into this like massive uh commercial phenomenon, so a lot of people are familiar with their music because they were just the absolute biggest band in the world for a yeah. while, weren't they? Um, but I don't find like the guitar playing, you know, the riffs are good. I, nah, 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 nah. You know, I remember this and you can get into it. And when you hear those things, you feel kind of good. But then I feel a bit embarrassed for the the timing of the guy. And, um, you know, I, again, everybody goes, yeah, but John Paul Jones, blah, blah, blah. Okay, he was doing his job. And, you know, I think Bonham was an okay drummer. He was fine. And, and, and again, I wouldn't even hold against him the fact that what he was doing was uh, borrowed from those who came before because that is what we do i mean i teach yeah. people how to do that as well, what my point is is that he he brought that into sort of classic rock drumming yep. where someone like ian pace is far more the product of big band drumming and but yeah he, you totally can you can hear it there, whereas yes. with bonham there's a grooviness there's a swampiness new orleansiness in his yep. drumming, which um which is is fascinating and i know um you know when i was playing with robert he said that they used to actually hire the meters in you know yeah. if they had a party or they were doing a gig they would hire the meters 
because Why they loved you? it. Um, yeah. And I, I can remember driving along in my car with Robert listening to the meters and Robert just started to sing every line and sing every beat. He knew Do you know the like, Robert Palmer albums, the Sneaking Sally Through the Alley, yeah. uh, which has the, the meters on it. And the next one, uh, Pressure uh, pressure Drop, yeah. uh, has Little Feet on it. Yeah. And that's and, like and, a... And, and, you know, Robert, Robert knew that stuff, you know, later on he, he pulled in Richard Haywood, Richie Haywood from... Yeah. I mean, Little there's Feet. a so, so that, that, that I think that's actually something that marks Zeppelin out... Mm-hmm. It's not so four square and bashy as Deep Purple and Black Sabbath. There's a there's a swampy yeah. um, sort of funky yes. New Orleans sound to the beat, especially later on. Um, I think the thing with Jimmy Page is, um, I think I don't agree about the riffs being simple. J- Jimmy Page's virtuosity was not as a soloist for me. It was more in the sort of folk guitar virtuosity and there's things going on in zeppelin in the riffs um i've known guitarists struggled trying to play something like the rain song that guitar part with the altered tuning and all the finger yeah. picking is is absolutely virtuoso the 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 bert yanch thing that he rips off yeah, but that's that thing of guitarists just have no sense of time and you know he de- where's the one jimmy where's the one Jimmy doesn't know where the one is, you know. I, I do need to know where the one is. Yeah, I, 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 I've always, I, I would agree with you that Jimmy Page's genius is in the studio, and on the out al- on the studio album, Zeppelin sound incredible, and they push studio playing. This yeah. idea that they this was this incredible live band, they were a very exploratory live band, and it's a quite astonishing that the biggest band in the world, you know, if you go and listen to a live you know, album has got half half an hour of mm-hmm. stuff which is pulling from Holst, the blues, avant garde jazz noise. It's all that's an incredible thing. But they're not a tight live band. They're an exploratory live band. Yeah, which know. I think any any I mean that that's in their favor. Yeah, I would I would definitely say because um, especially when you're um, you know raking it in and you're very popular and so on. It's amazing how many artists um, just become more and more sort of conservative and, and careful in their output. So from that point of view, if you've like made it, made the big time or whatever, and then you're, you're, you know, exploring your art. And that's like this thing, like where, again, uh, Bonham was playing with his hands on the kit. I mean, it's crap, right? But he's doing something cool by doing that, by exploring that thing, you know, and you can listen to like, again, Max Roach doing that. uh, And it's mind blowingly cool. And when Bonham does it, I feel slightly awkward, but I, I admire him for doing something that's he's, sort of he's, experimental and he's going out there, he's taking a risk and he's exploring his art. So on that level, I've, again, I've got no criticism of the guy as a musician or whatever. Uh, I would, well, I'll give, I'll, I'll counter your argument, but, you know, before I start to agree with you, I'll counter your argument with a story. I can remember um, being in a rehearsal room with Robert and he says, have you got a drum beat for this track we're working on? And I came up with something and Robert was, he, 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 it's not right and try something else. And I've got a ton of chops. Technically, I can play, way, I can play more stuff than Bonham can play. So I'm pulling everything out of the bag and none of it's working. And Robert turned around to me and says, I wish I could tell you what I want. It's really difficult. I can't tell you what I want. And at that moment, I thought, my God, this guy's used to having John Bonham in the band. Yeah. A guy that could just like Ringo Starr and like many rock drummers that yeah. may not have the chops of a jazz drummer, right? But what they're able to do is when the pressure is on, is yeah. come out with signature beats. Is that now, not a phenomenon of these like like bands that turned out really cool, that there's a certain element of luck and the guy got used to working with a bunch of people that he really got I on don't, with? I don't agree with that because I was in the same situation. Mm-hmm. I was put in the same situation with Robert saying, can you come up with something? Right. And that and the ability to come up with something that is simple, yet yeah. is a signature sound, right, in that situation. Yeah. It's really, really difficult. Now yes. you could say, yeah, maybe they were lucky and Bonham just fluked it a hundred times. And I'm not saying fluked it, but it's like <laughs> but there are there are but, certain like groups of people who obviously managed to gel together. And so that they they create that little magical moment of the the great bands that we like. So you know, there's the whole story about Ringo being the greatest drummer in Liverpool at the time, and everything, yeah, yeah, blah blah blah. So he, you know, he had skill and, and all of this, but th- there was uh, an element of these guys got together who gelled really well, and and it sort of, I don't know, any of the bands. That yeah, we know they're, they're, that's um, with that, but that's the, that, that for a rock band. That's the talent. I mean, yeah. I would say someone like Larry Mullen from U2 is a similar drummer. 
he, you know, he's not an yeah. astonishing technical drummer, but he knows how to get an incredible sound in the studio and, and play iconic drum parts that, yes. that that add to the song. Um, you know, that they, they you two have just announced until that, they know, replaced him with a machine, Larry Mullen. You know, yeah. just like you suddenly feel like, does anyone know what it's not just the songs, the drummer has actually contributed to those songs. So I can get on the drums kit now and I can play track after track. Yeah. Where you would go, oh, that's Zeppelin. And that yeah. that is whatever the reason, whether you say Bonham shouldn't deserve the credit for that, or he should, or he fluked it or not, in our culture, he's the drummer that has contributed yeah. the huge level of drum, iconic drumness to the world. Okay, so yeah, I I I wouldn't dispute that or disagree for one minute with that. Yeah. Um and Again, I bring it back to the point that that distorts the actual conversation of us as drummers in a world of drummers, because I, when I listen to it, and again, this is very, this is completely subjective. When I listen to it, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Now, you could give me again with your sort of um, uh, dialectical skills and your academic background and your encyclopedic knowledge and all of that, you can give me like a intelligent argument why John Bonham has this cultural relevance, blah blah blah, which I would not disagree with. And I recognize the existence of, you know, canonical works. I think that's the right term. Yeah. And so Led Zeppelin is a canonical act and and the, the drumming of John Bonham is canonical. It has a kind of cultural role. Well, here, here we move into the third thing. And I think this is the last mm -hmm. thing I want to do, because I, I just want to make these points of why I think that he is the, what makes him great before we start to pull it apart. Because I totally yeah. am with you that I don't think it's a healthy thing and it would be good to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. The other one is he was dead at 32 years old. Yeah. So he didn't get to like screw it up like all the other people. No, did. that was the one thing. He didn't do loads of gated reverb atrocities with drum sequences in there. In yeah. the, um, you know, he's not like Cozy Powell or then Lee just fell out Emerson, of it. Lake and Powell. You know, <laughs> he didn't ruin his, 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 um, reputation but yeah. also there's actually a mystery about it there's a finite amount of recordings yeah uh, one of the things that's really interesting with bonham is i know a lot of the people who knew bonham and yet you can get online and people will discuss his influences nobody quite knows it because there's no interview where bonham said these yes. are my influences yeah. and i've been able to sit down with mates and say who, who do you think bonham was listening to mm -hmm. and and being able to find out what he, what he was into from the horse's yeah. mouth. Gene Krupa know. and Clyde Stubblefield, so, I'm guessing. So what, what, well, in the 70s when he was doing Led Zeppelin, apparently Alphonse Mouzon. All oh. he talked about was Alphonse Mouzon to Robert. He loved Alphonse Mouzon. He loved Lenny White. Cobham, yeah. he knew all that stuff. Yeah. But my mate Kevin Gammon, who was the guitarist in the Band of Joy with Bonham, I said, who do you think his biggest influences were? And he said, i got to be honest, it was probably Ringo. Ah, which I've never that's yeah. so that's a piece of knowledge that no one seems to have, have, have yeah. put out there so that's very interesting but so that's the, what this points is is that there's a mystery there if the guy was still alive now I don't think this would be going on he, he would be no in another bracket but and because that's, again dead, that's a weird thing about gods isn't it the gods need yeah. to die uh, yeah. to sustain yeah. their status to totally, totally. Right. So, I don't mean so that there, there, there we way. got I think the 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 there, there, that, that points to his greatness, if you want to call it a greatness. I think so. Now we've done that, we can get to the meat and potatoes. So, Joe, why do you think yeah. that that iconic status needs to be questioned? Put put your argument forward. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, there's there's a bunch of different layers of stuff, and this is this is maybe if I haven't got myself into enough trouble yet. One of them is from a sort of anarchist perspective of sort yeah. of no gods, no masters. Yeah. And. I have I have that worshipful feeling, if you like, towards the drummers that I really love or musicians that I really love. I love Dizzy Gillespie. I love him. Mm. I love the music of the man. I love his character, blah, blah, blah. I'm a huge fan. I love Frank Zappa. Uh, you know, I love Ringo. I love Levon. I love Richie Hayward. I love Ayeta Moreira. Jesus, do I love him. Um, you know, uh, you know, again, people like Lenny White that I've listened to a lot, Ian Pace. I'm Simon Kirk. I'm really listening to a lot at the moment. And this is a guy who does nothing in such a beautiful way. Uh, and I, I'm I'm trying to figure out how to... Now, this is one of the areas where maybe Bonham, you know, because it's easy to say, oh, Bonham does diggly diddly diddly d, And so it's something that you can latch onto and talk about. And I don't really know how to talk about the beauty of what Simon Kirk does, which is just nobody does that in rock music. So no, I think space. Bonham does it. I, 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 I think part of the problem with Bonham 
being worshipped. Yeah. He says a bunch of really young kids that are astonished that he's going diddly diddly and don't yeah. know that, that drummers Any, can play can like diddly diddly, Dennis yeah. Chambers because they've never heard Dennis Chambers. Yeah. And that impresses them. Yeah. I think Simon Kirk's genius was to be able to take quite a, 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 a quite a simple um, format, which is a rock beat, yeah. the dialogue between the bass and the, the bass drum and the snare drum, and how that relates to the rest yeah. of the music in the band. And you can do that at sixty BPM, right? You know, yeah. And but Bon, but Bonham does it. it, it there's no, no denying that. I mean, he, no if you comparison. listen to Presence, which is the album that nobody listens to by right. Zeppelin, you put on Presence and you listen to Bonham's drumming and the way he's constructed his beats, it's, yeah. uh, to me, it's astonishing. See, this is what worries me because I'm going to probably have to go back and listen more carefully to this horrible band. <laughs> um, um, but, you know, because because yeah, I've never heard anything that feels remotely like Simon Kirk's spacious drumming, right? And I feel like so so the 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 thing about this lionization of particular characters, and as I say, we're kind of um, pointing out Bonham because he is yeah. the most lionized. But is yeah, is it is kind of takes up the conversation in the general drumming community, and uh, you know, it's like Bonham again, Piet, Kola Yuta, I hate Lars Ulrich. Right. That's yeah, the, that's, that's your, and so it's narrowed yeah. down uh, topics of conversation. Now, first of all, I think uh, rock music is a great musical form. It's kind of almost my home, like my home music is R&B yeah. music. Again, the old fashioned, not ooh, uh, all of that stuff, but uh, rhythm and blues, Johnny Hooker, uh, Howling Wolf and all of that. That's where I sort of um, I sucked at the teat of that music, yeah. I guess. Uh, am I allowed to say that? Um, and um the you know evolution of that into maybe Rolling Stones, Beatles, uh, then you know, but I got quite early into then Zappa and you know, American things, you know, later on country music, little feet, and nobody talks about that thing. And uh, as a teacher, uh, this fixation, first of all, on what did John Bonham do is very limiting. In like you, like you mentioned already, you know, like how do you get somebody into learning some samba and bossa nova stuff and all the stuff you could do. If you were a prog rock musician and you developed some Kika Freitas samba chops, you could do a ton of interesting stuff with that. And again, I'm not a huge prog rock person. And, and due to these sort of economics and uh, circumstances, you know, in growing up in the eighties, I had close to the edge vinyl record. I recorded that onto a cassette. I put it on my Walkman and I listened to that one record thousands of times. I know every note of that record, but I didn't listen to all the other Yes records or, you know, I know some King Crimson and so on. Yeah. But there's 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 so much amazing creative stuff going on, even in the 70s at the same time. You know, there's no, nobody pays any attention to Carmine piece really. You know, he's got his moustache and his book and all of this. Mm. But, uh, and again, I didn't like the band. What was it? Humble Pie? Is that Humble Pie? Um, Vanilla Fudge. Vanilla Fudge. Yeah. They, you know, I'm, I'm not keen, but I loved his drumming. So that's one of those drummers that I could listen to for the drumming. Um, Credence. I don't know. I don't, don't want to just like say names of stuff. But, you know, how do you explore Leave on Helm when everybody's going, John Bonham this, John Bonham that? Well, oh, it's let, John Bonham. Let, let, let me go for the counter argument. Yeah. This is, would be my counter argument against what I said earlier, right? There's a whole ton of rock drummers mm -hmm. in the early 70s that are as good as Bonham. And some greater Barrymore yeah. Barlow, technically just Jethro Tull's drummer. Okay, yeah. Barrymore Barlow destroyed would destroy tech yeah. bottom, technically. There we yeah. go. Um, the guys from Gentle Giant. Yeah. I mean, I'm not from the argument that the technical you know, thing I, is I can start to listen. Bruford. Yeah. <laughs> Bill yeah. Bruford, technically. But Bill Ward was, yeah. was Bill like, Ward's phenomenal incredible drummer. stuff. Incredible yeah. drummer. So, so yeah. this idea that Bonham... But where do you see an internet is, is, conversation going, like somebody salivating over Bill Ward? You just yeah. don't see uh, it. But also, it's like um, the whole host of guys that never... That we're not going to mention, that played on albums at that time. Yeah. Um, um, that are phenomenal drummers. Like I said, the guys that played with Jeff Beck... Mm -hmm. um, the guys played with Robin Trower. Basically, every single rock band at that time yeah. would not. All those Zappa had. guys. Look, yeah. I mean, Ralph Humphrey. But then that's the other thing. Apostrophe. Any any fusiony drummer, you know, the Cobhams, yeah. Tony Williams, all can destroy Bonham. They, yeah. they, they, it technically, if we're just going to talk technically yeah. and ability and stuff, stuff like I'm, I'm on board with this. Which, like the technical yeah. so, facility so isn't the thing. Any that kid that sat there justifying it, go, oh, Bonham's the greatest drummer. No one could play yeah. like Bonham. It's exactly the same thing with Neil Peart. Yeah, these drummers oh. are, they're technically oh. nothing compared yeah. Yeah. to a whole no, to a minor league jazz drummer of the period that no one mentions. Yeah, you know, then they can't play in. They're not yeah. on the same league as that. Technically, I'm yeah. not. We as we've said, that doesn't mean they're not great. 
Yeah. It's, it's, it's neither all my favourite drummers are non-technical drummers. Yeah. yeah, people who worship Bonham because they think he can do stuff that no one else can do yeah. is absolute nonsense. Yeah. Right? That's the that is something I agree with you hundred percent. And the other thing is when I'm teaching drums, so often I'm trying to teach certain principles, and I and and the kid will be sat there and go, Why can't I do this? And I have to say to them, You're listening to too much rock drumming. <laughs> so they can't play triplets, they can't swing. Right. right, they can't. They can't do coordination where their right hand doesn't come down on the same time as their yeah. right. Yeah, when did foot. the swing thing die? Like, because 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 there was a point in the seventies where things really like because you can hear um the influence again. Like Ian Pace is a big band drummer, Mitch Mitchell yeah. arguably, and so on. And Bonham, you can hear that swinginess in his they, playing. They could swing. They could swing. Yeah, but in the eighties, maybe at some point there was like well, what the, I'm the saying, I, I, things I, this went, week. I've had one kid where I'm going. I just showed him the basis of a swing beat. So he's going on the ride cymbal, accenting his hi hat on, on two and four, and then feathering the bass drum. And that's really difficult for those kids to do. Yeah. So, for example, they keep putting the hi hat on one and three. They don't want to <laughs> syncopate it, right? They keep turning the swing upside down. Yeah. Right. They can't feather the bass drum because they've been slamming it in like John Bon on it and burying yeah. the beat. And they can't, all that stuff, which yeah. we know is actually the fundamentals of all drumming. The basic yes. swing beat is all drumming is based upon that, including everything that John Bonham did. Yes, and everything you that can't um, get the kid to do it. Chad Smith is doing. They have you know, not. They, they they have not and will not listen to that that drumming. So yes. if you haven't heard it, it's really hard to play. That that would be an. Ex- do you give kids to listen to Trump Mask though. Replica? Yeah, yeah, because I I like to give kids to listen to Zappo and Beefheart and stuff like that because they that is a kind of little opening because they'll go, oh, this is weird. And people just say, well, you're not giving kids to listen to this stuff. They need Ed Sheeran. And it's like, no, the, no. The, a, a drummer or any musician will only get good based upon what they listen to. And yes. so um, I, I remember there's a classic story. There's a, a the drummer, Steve White, mm-hmm. um, who drums for Paul Weller. Lovely gentleman. Um, yeah. I, I once said to Steve, how did you get into drumming? And bizarrely, he was a huge Bill for Bill Bruford fan. Okay, and he said Bruford. He basically wrote to EG Records, Kim's Kim's label, and somehow got a letter to Bill Bruford. And Bill just said, "Yeah, if you want a lesson, come down." It's absolutely wow. bizarre. So young Steve White goes down for a lesson with Bill Bruford, and he said he gets there, and what Bill does is stick on a Sly Stone record, yeah, and then Seth sat him down, and then came back, made a cup of tea, and he said, Do "You get it, you get it." <laughs> and I thought that fundamentally that. first lesson. That yeah. is, you You are not going to move forward unless you can let go of what you're listening to now. Yeah, Greg Eric, right? You know, because the whole point is all these little 12-year-old kids who hear John Bonham, the yeah. reason they learn to play is because they heard John Bonham. John Bonham is the thing that makes them motivated to play. I mean, nobody I interact with listens to Led Zeppelin, and I do introduce it, right? I do yeah. introduce Led Zeppelin to my students, and we, we play um, uh, Levy and so on. Um so I'm, you know, I'm not trying to. Uh, yeah, no. Bury, my, bury them. my point is, is that the yeah. the, the idea. Everybody that, loves that, Dave Grohl. That, Dave Grohl is the hero drummer of of my students. The, you know, the younger students. But but Grohl is, the, is a manifestation the same of John arguments Bonham. that we can level at this Bonham thing. Yeah, you could you could level at Neil Peart. Yeah, and you could level the Dave Plank. Grohl. Yeah, but you the know. thing is, Grohl isn't held up as this like deity. So all my my young students love Dave Grohl. Uh, and you know, the ones who listen to music at least, and they love Taylor Hawkins because they listen to the Foos and they listen to Nirvana, which is the kind of Led Zeppelin of yeah. our current era, I guess, in a way. Um, I'm not making an academic statement there, viewers. Yeah. Um, but the um the, the love for Dave Grohl, you know, Dave Grohl is a manifestation of John Bonham, but nobody's doubt, holding up I'm... Dave Grohl as this uh figure of like absolute total drumness. So sure, you can like Dave Grohl, you can like John Bonham, be inspired again as an educator, whatever. Uh, whatever you like is fine with me. If you came into me and said, I worship this drummer and this is what I want to do, I'm going to explore how we, how we, you that, know, develop that's that my interest. point. It's a great yeah. thing. It's a great thing these drummers exist and they motivate yeah. people to play. Yeah. But if you want to get better, if you're teaching somebody and you, you know, right, they've got to this point, the next thing they need to do is they need to move up to something else. I'll give you an actual example. I got one kid I teach. He's uh, 15, 16 years old. He's a phenomenal drummer. If he's watching this, he'll know who he is. He's a phenomenal drummer. Hi. And he's a Bonham nut. 
Yeah. And I've taught him everything I can possibly teach him. He's just nailing everything that I can teach him within his yeah. world of the yeah. Bonham outlook. But he's also into dream theatre. Yeah. So he wants, he said, can you teach me odd time signatures? And so I, I wrote him out something in an odd time and he starts playing it and he turns around and goes, this is really hard. Why can't I play it? Yeah. And I say, because you've got to listen to it. And to be honest, listen to Dream Theater do it. It's such a narrow slice of time signature playing. You've yeah. got to listen to Joe Morello do it. You've got to listen to Billy Cobham do it. You've got to listen to Vinny do it. You've got to listen to David Terry Bozio do it or Steve Gadd yeah. do it. You've got to assimilate. And if you never listened again to John Bonham, there'd be no great loss now to his development, right? I mean, and yeah, well, people, I, I feel that I, I, doesn't I, really matter. I feel that, and it's not, there's quite a few students where them dropping their love of Dave Grohl or Neil Peart or John Bonham would be the best thing that they could ever do. Um, I yeah. The thing for me, when I was started playing, I was into all this stuff, New Wave of British Heavy Metal and then Zeppelin, and, and I was into all that. The, the About after three weeks I'd started playing the drums, though, there was a Billy Cobham drum clinic on BBC Two on mainstream television. Yeah. In 1980. Yeah. You know, all... Maybe maybe 81, I can't remember quite when I started playing. Anyway, very early on, I can remember watching this video of Billy Cobham and in my little prepubescent mind, I, I can remember thinking, Bonham and all these are great, but this is another level. This yeah. Billy Cobham fellow is another level. Um, and my dad was a drummer and he'd watched it as well. And he was like, my God, this guy can play. So my dad went out and bought a Billy Cobham album. Yeah, And I would like, so I know the mindset of most people. I would be listening to Zeppelin and all these bands that I loved, yeah. thinking they were the greatest drummers in the world. Then I'd put this Billy Cobham album on. Yeah. And in my little mind, I can remember thinking, this guy's better. How can he be better? Because John Bonham's the greatest drummer in the world. Yeah. But Billy Cobham, this guy's, I don't think Bonham could do this. Yeah, you know? I, mean, I like, never, yeah, I think that's, maybe that's a thing. Because I never latched on to John Bonham like that. I was listening to like Nothingness to Eternity. Uh, yeah. McLaughlin, if you've heard right? that first, you're just going to I listened to that hundreds nice. and hundreds of times before. I mean, I, as I say, I might have listened to that one album once or something uh, while in between the Howling Wolf stuff and Everly Brothers and Elvis and whatever. I was very, you know, 50s and 60s. Um, so I might have listened to that and just thought, oh, crappy white blues. And then, yeah, listening. I mean, there was a, a Lenny White album as well that I used to listen. And again, it was like the records that my dad had. I'd listened yeah. to those hundreds and hundreds of times. And then Genesis. I used to listen Genesis, Genesis, Phil Collins. Wh level. Which Lenny White album was it? Was um, it Venusian Summer? No, City said something, something. There's a picture of him with a big, big white brim hat. Incredible album. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's got weird time stuff. It's yeah. a kind of um, uh, um, what I would have known as jazz fusion mixed with kind of Zappa esque, but I didn't know what Zappa was. But it and there's actually some real, that. there's some real slick sort of rhythm and blues. I listen to that stuff, stuff on there. A hundred times. I love that, that, that record. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. And but you see, again, see, if you listen to Lenny White's. Yeah. Right. That right foot of Lenny White's yeah. is unbelievable. It's yeah, like but there's no but there's no way I would I would ever go and listen. But again, I was listening to like uh, Dizzy Gillespie and sort of modern Dizzy Gillespie at the time, so in the 80s or whatever, but I would yeah. we'd have like records. There was a record, Dizzy Gillespie, Bernard Purdy, and Toots Tealmans, right? Live at the Montreux Festival. And again, once I had a record, I listened to that record hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And so you've got no bassist, you've got Diz, you've got Purdy playing mm -hmm. funk. Diz noodling away on the trumpet. Toots Tillman's playing guitar, who doesn't really know how to play guitar, yeah. right? He's a um, harp player. Yeah, yeah. And it's the funkiest. It's a devastatingly good record. It's just the most beautiful thing. And I listen and listen. I know every note, again, of the, the drums and the trumpet in that. And... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so by the time... Now, I did come to, like, Deep Purple. So I came to, like, classic rock maybe a bit later. I even came to the Beatles later. So I'd be listening to blues and, and jazz music, whatever, um, some fusion. And then I would come to classic rock and even, yeah, you know, started listening to the White Album, Abbey Road, the later Beatles stuff um, that I listened to kind of carefully. And then I would have come to, like, Deep Purple a bit later on. I skipped sort of ACDC and all that kind of meat and potatoes rock stuff. Yeah. And never really got into the whole proggy thing apart from those particular albums. Yeah, close that, to the that edge. I'm familiar. Yeah, close to the edge, like Lenny White record, which is the same sort of neighborhood. And again, then I got into Zappa and Zappa's made 150 albums. I don't know what. But yeah. you know, listening to Zappa albums is a lifetime's yeah. work. And, and I still if, don't and, and if you if anything. you are the sort of drummer that's interested in the technical facility of drummers uh, and the technical advancement of the music, the, there's there's basically for me, there's Zappa. 
probably Henry Henry Cow, if you <laughs> oh, want to I'm, go that far. I'm that's somewhat insane. okay. That's, yeah, I'm I mean, somewhat okay the with most Henry Cow. Yeah. rock music recorded, technically, yeah. is Henry Cow. But yeah, you try to explain that to a 13 year old Led Zeppelin fan or a 13 year old Foo Fighter fan. This is the problem. No, but they see. are intrigued when I put them. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. When you give them Trout Mask Replica or, you yeah. know, Apostrophe, it's a story, you yeah. know. And, you know, I dreamed I was an Eskimo. And, oh, ooh, this is interesting. Don't eat the yellow. So, so I'm going to I'm going to give an explanation to this. Yeah. I think it goes like this, right? Um, when people who play the drums, it's because they love music. And so um, it's an expression of their love of music. I love music. You love music. All the kids that come for lessons who really want to play, they yeah. all love music. So yes. their minds are totally open. Yes. And what happens is they love music. They love the drums and they latch on like magnetically to anything that's drummy. Yeah. Now, because Led Zeppelin are sort of ubiquitous, you know, yep. they're, they're everywhere. At some point, not quite as, as ubiquitous as Queen. Queen Queen are the, the biggest rock band in terms of young people. They're, that they're right? Yeah, they do actually. Yeah, that's, that's actually, yeah. And, I, and I've noticed Roger Taylor more and more has become an influence on young drummers. He's, he's, he's mentioned more and more. It is, but, so it's a very good point. It's a very consistently loved band. Yeah. So, yeah. But Led Zeppelin sit there in the background. They're there. And yeah. as soon as you start playing, you're going to check out John Bonham or Neil. Pitt. There's a certain, they're, they're like entry drummers to me. Yeah. Right? And you love that. And that promotes you. It motivates you. And yeah. so you start playing and you develop skill. Once yeah. you start to develop skill, the psychologically you change so you're no longer going i love drumming i love this guy i love what bonner was doing and this drum is amazing you yeah. start to measure everything in skill and people then move to the second stage of their musical development yeah. where it's actually they're massively demotivated and anybody yeah. you can play anybody can do anything they can't do they find depressing because they're measuring everything on a sort of physical ability level yeah. this is the middle level of, that's the vinicola level isn't it? they're literally stuck there yeah and because they get stuck there they go look well in the end i like john bonham that's what i like i don't like anything else you can yeah. play me all your dennis chambers or your eric moores or all these modern drummers i'm not interested that's and that's when you get the um oh it's just shallow chops and all that and you feel like well why did you like bonham then yeah you know if you if, if you're, you're it's not consistent and and yeah. um I, I believe once you're in that stage, I'd give right, you a million pounds if you could find me a, a, a consistent human being. <laughs> yeah, it's but um, the psychology of that I found very useful because yeah. um, when I the college I teach at, when I get kids at sixteen, they are apps they come in absolutely demotivated, right? Anything if you'll depress them if you put on anybody you can play, they oh, like yeah. they're straight off. They can't they don't like it unless it's in their narrow little world that they've parceled off yeah you know and that's why you get the arse end of heavy metal with drummers that are just literally going you know like this and i and i'm like the amount of rows i've got in with because you, these are just young teenagers they're yeah. just stuck in this measurement trap yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, which, which again is like a, a, a part of a wider social phenomenon now. It's the sort of uh, new labour, if you like, sort of measurement and metrics and yeah, you know, this, is the world, this is the world graded really. and marked. And then this guy can play 180 BPM, uh, double bass, sixteenths, or whatever, and that's the thing that that people are trying to achieve. And, uh, and that whole world of the that, that has a, taken over a, big, a little bit. Yeah. Is it, see if you go on. So is, is is John Bonham a representation? Or, again, and it's not no, John it's all, Bonham. It's, it's all, our it's worship. They've all got their him. places in this world. Yeah. They've so what? But, if but is he a sort YouTube, of comfortable metric to look at for people yeah. in a way? And again, I'm not. Uh, this is not about them and their art. But in terms of our perception or the the community's perception of these deity figures is maybe like if you fixate on John Bonham and like, for example, you know, you, you must be familiar with the channel Bonzolium guy called Terry. No, he's, I haven't. All oh, right. Okay. He's, I mean, he knows, he knows Bonham and he knows uh, Stuart Copeland. Like he, he's got, again, got that very, very deep knowledge. Yeah. He knows about symbols and stuff. And he's this kind of um, you know, very energetic guy who presents very off the cuff videos and he's fascinating, beautiful with knowledge is, and enthusiasm is a beautiful thing. So I guess I'm trying to cover my back a little bit and just say, look, I love that that someone's into that. I've got nothing against somebody loving John Bonham. If you want to learn about John Bonham and I can help you with that, that's cool. Blah, blah, blah. I won't slag him off to you. But um, is it a comfortable deity? Because again, if we look at the sort of levels of like, uh, okay, I'm going to categorize now. I'll do a list. Bonham, um, Pert, 
Kola Yuta, right? Now, to me, Kola Yuta is really a great drummer of some sort. I'm not that bothered about him uh, in terms of the music, but except for Zappa's stuff. Mm. Um, but I can see he's a fantastic drummer. Yeah. I can't play any of his stuff. Um, yeah. Neil Peart, I can't listen to. Uh, I just find useless, of no interest to me. Again, if you love Neil Peart, that's fine. I've got nothing I love Rush him. and I love Neil Peart, but I agree with everything you're saying. It's just wooden. It, I don't like, like it, the but one, the thing is I'm allowed not to like... And you're allowed one to like yeah? this is destructive destructive. Yeah. So um I'm not saying Bonham is like those kids that are listening to just people doing blast beats. Yeah. What I'm saying no, is no, but, that but that's every, a sort of... everyone's in a comfort zone. Yes. If you go onto YouTube, that's yeah. a predominantly older audience. And I'm afraid there's just millions of drummers out there that yeah. do not want their boat rock. And yeah. they want to live in a sort of dogmatic universe. Where yeah. they could say John Bonham's the greatest drummer in yeah. the world. But and I feel like if I could encourage those people to he is because yeah. he's John Bonham. Yeah. If so we could the let them let to... go of this though, Andy, they could they could fulfill a they lot don't, more they about They don't their need drumming. to get let go of it. That's the point. Mm. If they're happy, yeah. Right, they're happy. But just yeah. to just to elucidate what their argument is, and you can yes. see what they're doing. Yes. John Bonham's the greatest drummer in the world. You yeah. will never ever be greater than him all yeah. you can do is get as close to him and yeah. the way you get close to him is by mimicking him as much as you possibly can not yeah. just down to what he plays but the same drum sizes that you know yeah and a ludwig drum kit you know having the same symbols and studying yeah. every single bit you're just trying to get close to the yeah. deity yeah right which and, is okay for some people to do still yeah you know and i, I don't mind that it, some people do that i'm hoping somebody watching this video is going to go yeah. that's me and younger kids won't do. They'll be stuck in a trap. They'll get stuck in the trap, totally different trap yeah. of, of just worshipping some guy because they're the yeah. fastest drummer in the world. And yeah. it's exactly the same thing. Yeah, worship it's Tony a, Allen. It's a, dead it's a trap. Something. Yeah, worship Richie Hayward for a bit. You know, worship someone for a bit and move on. That's this else. is precisely. This is. I mean, I've I've had to do this so often with drummers that I've taught is to try and remind them that that feeling they had when they first heard Bonham, all the things we said at the beginning of this video, which I, I yeah. said, which I think is great. That is what makes him great. And that inspired you. Yeah. Well, there's other drummers that. out there that will do that for you. But the trouble is psychologically, you are mm -hmm. now, your insecurities, you're holding on to this one guy like this for dear life, say, yes. no, this is what's good. Nothing yeah. else is good. You can't change my mind. You can't rock my boat. But this is a sort of primitive urge to, to have a, to have a god you know or to have a, a guardian angel it feels like a very primitive thing um and well, I, I, I think it's what it is is that not in a bad way these, necessarily. these drummers if you chat to all these musicians yeah if you actually talk to them they're massively demotivated yeah when they if when they put youtube you have on, to be i am I'm on there and he's <laughs> playing all this fast stuff way yeah. past anything yeah. Bonham can do yeah. they go like oh what's yeah. the point yeah but again, come, is there a way to diffuse that? Because, you know, I watch these guys on Instagram and I see this and I, I feel the same. Oh, my God, I have no facility with the instrument that I've been playing for 40 years, right? I've been playing this and I feel like I've got no facility because there's an 18-year-old sweaty guy like this, blah, blah, well, the blah. The thing is, is that this is the way it is. You have got facility. It's, yeah, what it's, but it's meaningless is, is anyway. That, is that as as time goes on and you get older. Yeah. Um, it's all the, about sly. The, the shift, there's a shift in what is valued technically. Oh, a cat. The yeah. internet gods are watching us. That's why I looked around. I heard somebody walked in. Hail the cat. Um, so, for example, this and this is this is a remedy for this. Yeah. Every now and then, I'll go back to Joe Jones. Yeah. Oh. And Joe Jones is like... Are we talking about he's Papa He's a technical here? monster, but Papa he's Joe, not like... Not Philly. Not Philly Joe Jones. No, Papa, Joe. Papa Joe Jones. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll go yes. back to him and I'll watch him and I'll go, now there's artistry. He is there's really beauty. the Papa of everything. Yeah. Right. And and, and yes. back in 1930, people were astonished. The Instagram era of that, you know, when people yes. were a big band era, people would have watched Joe Jones and go, oh my God, he's incredible. How can you play like that? Yes. I can't play a, a, a crush role like that. Right. Mm. The same as well as Life I can't do a whole life trying. And so the yeah. point is, is that, What's artistically valued technically changes. Yeah. But I've said, go back to JoJo's and watch it and look at the expression on his face. Look at the joy when he plays. Look at the look at the beauty and the entertainment. Yeah. If he does a solo, you're going to watch his solo to the end because he'll entertain you. Yeah. And that's what all the drummers that Bonham was doing at a period in time. But um to judge yourself technically, um, I, I I did a masterclass yesterday with a guitarist called Roy Marchbank, who is Technically, 
um, he's a friend of mine. He's technically the most advanced guitarist in the world. He's the one that's upsetting everybody, and the world hates him. All these guitarists <laughs> can't do it because he's faster than anybody, you know, and they're yeah. always trying to catch him out. And it's just, it's unbelievable. So he does his masterclass, and the kids are saying, How do you get to play fast like that? And he goes, He says, You get, he says, You do whatever you love doing. He says, Don't listen to me. Yes. don't listen to anybody yes. and this is a guy that's got the chops and they say how do you get to pick like that and he says yeah. I, I looked at the way i picked and i pushed it personally he said you'll pick different you'll have to work your own way out of picking and, and the whole two hours was basically him and when they and then he'd go off the technique subject and then he'd talk about the new sounds he'd got he'd, he'd detune the guitar he got like he was just exploring the whole world of guitar and this guy is just in love with the guitar yeah he's just he's just fired up by things and that's how you get the chops yeah so if you, do you, if you have to be chops, that to be a good musician to Bonham, stop yeah. holding on to that dogma <laughs> and go right what should i do i'm gonna yeah. stick crisp packets all over my drums what will that sound like do you have to be that obsessed to 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 be a good musician because again there's a there's a, a very strong part of our culture is this idea that you're so fixated uh on your art beyond everything else yeah and i'm fine again i'm fine with those people i love and adore a lot of the people who are like that i know i'm not like that you know so i i have been a four hours a day for some brief periods blah 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 but i'm just not somebody uh, you know and i've pursued technique on some level in slightly obsessive way but i'm just nowhere near uh that dedicated and but i feel i'm quite content with myself as a musician at the same time as i'm sort of you know i think i'm very ordinary i'm an ordinary drummer i can go out and play weddings i can go and play in a blues gig you know i could play some straight ahead jazz i'm quite good at reggae and ska and, and all of this sort of stuff but you know there's nothing i don't think anybody would look at me and think oh there's a remarkable artist i'm kind of happy with that right do you think that that, that everybody needs to aspire to be like this like uh, world class thingy or are we are we just some of us no, are just my, happy my point being is, is reasonably that, good um my point throughout this video is, is that you get good because of what you listen to you listen yep. to new stuff it's it's like kolb's learning cycle if you look at the actual psychology that's how you learn yep. there's new experiences you know um breed new learning imitate and assimilate you just innovate. listen to one person and you've if you've made a stake in the ground bonham's the best and there's no one greater that yeah. can't be questioned you yeah. find but do it but you've now shut off your your um development yeah. as a player yes right and that's why i agree this is why i wanted to have this chat because i thought yeah. if we could you know for this if there's one person watches that and goes you know that's the case well, yeah well, who should I go and listen to? Well, go off and explore. Yeah, I mean, listen to go musicians listen to first. Listen to Bob Marley for a bit, you know. Yeah, well, any, anything. Follow your nose. Um, go yeah. to someone you, you that you respect who's a good musician. Say, what do you listen to? And if they're listening yeah. to someone, then go listen to them, you know, yes. or whoever they listen to. Like, just don't listen to anybody. If you, if you go on a Facebook group or any you look at the popular YouTube videos, whoever they're talking about, ignore those people for a year. Right? Yeah, yeah, because don't, yeah. there's, there's like, millions well, and millions and millions of incredible musicians who you never heard of, and that are doing again. I mean, my recent obsession was I discovered Tony Allen, the guy who played drums for Fela Kuti, yeah. and I'm just personally blown away. Now, I don't think everybody needs to go and learn. You know, I'm not saying, and, and this is one of the things, you know, where the the community is saying you you must all worship John Bonham. I'm not saying everybody needs to worship Tony Allen or Ayata Marrera, uh, but you know, go and have a look at those things that are kind, kind of wacky. You know, I've, I've got the um, Kika Freitas book, who's a, one of the great, great Brazilian drummers. He's an astonishing drummer. I've gone, I've seen him live. Uh, it's just like unwittingly good drummer. And I've got his book and I work on a little bit from it and I can't even get the beginnings of whatever he's doing, you know. And I think if I work on this for the rest of my life, I'm never really going to get what he's doing. But the but amount will. of stuff that's the done, is you will. But it's done stuff to my drumming and it's yeah, done stuff you will. to my approach. You will. This is yeah. the whole thing. It's like you will. It's like because the way you learn is what you listen to. Yeah. And you you will find a way. And if, yeah. if you won't, then you go to a drum teacher and you people should be going to drum teachers and saying, I want to play like this. I can't. They should definitely be going that. to drum teachers, Andy. People should be going to drum teachers. That's a whole Yeah, I, I, if somebody comes and says, I'm into Tony Allen, yeah. Um, I know who Tony Allen is. I, I know that I can listen to it. 
I can look at the guy and go, yeah, they're, they're probably stuck because of that. And we yes. may come around to the same thing I was discussing earlier. They've yeah. listened to too much John Bonham and they can't break <laughs> out of that four square rock way of playing. Yeah. You know, that, that you know, that they used to, that, that every rock beat the right hands crossed over the left. They don't want to want to cross. They don't want to play on accented. They're no good at syncopation, all these other things. Yeah. I mean, it's like going back to Dizzy Gillespie, because when you were talking about it, I really do want to mention this. Dizzy Gillespie got known as one of the architects of bebop. Yes. And the thing with bebop was its great innovation was the phrasing. Yeah. It's that phrasing rather than. Yeah, it's yeah, never been bettered. Yes. Yeah. Well. But the That's thing is, thing. after the bebop period, yeah. Dizzy's exploration into Afro Cuban through and, and also slight Spanish influences, that whole South American influence. Dizzy did more then for music yep. yes. by bringing the Afro-Cuban influences in. Yes. But when you start to listen to Dizzy yeah. in the 70s and 80s, yes. those grooves that they're playing, yeah. they're heavy funk grooves. I, I, I've had exactly, I had a yes. video of Dizzy live with uh, Arturo Sandoval. And they yeah, got I mean, I've seen to... Arturo Sandoval so many times. I've seen the United Nation Orchestra, which is yeah. uh, Giovanni Hidalgo on conga, Aieto on percussion, and um, oh, I had his name. Uh, I can't forgive myself. I've forgotten his name now. El Negro. Um, Ignacio Barroa yeah. playing drums, uh, drum set, because a Cuban, I think a Cuban drummer. And it's got like incredible. I mean, Arturo is there. Yeah. Um, uh, Paquito de Rivera, like all the like jazz tip top. Guys, and there's a whole a, there's yeah. a whole bunch of guys out there. Go and learn a songo, people. Forget about John Bonham. Learn how to play a songo. Well, it's just hopefully up. on this video, what we're getting across is that my argument is Bonham's great, but he's just a drummer, right? Yeah. He occupies a space which we, we, we which is cultural. Yes, he's cult. There's a whole bunch of reasons culturally. Yeah. Some of those are musical reasons. I think a lot of it has got to do with the drum sound. I think it's it's just such an incredible drum sound. Yes. Jazz drummers like his sound because they want an open sound. Yeah. You know, they they, they appreciate Okay, yeah, that. very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, never know, talked about um, that. Steve Gadd, the polar opposite, is it's all dead heads and gaffer tape yeah. and, and tightness, and I love that as well. Yes. And I've never been able to decide which way I want to go you know, between those two. That's why um, we need two drum kits, Andy. Yeah, I do. I mean, it's like I... I I'll tune open and I'll play like that. Um, when when I um I did a clinic tour with Simon Phillips and Simon Phillips is like the he's like the, the god of open tuning and resonance. Yeah, and uh, he he actually he might have to control it. Me. On the Him first clinic, Carlock. he actually put all the mics on the kit and yep. he was going around and he 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 was going, "What? Why is your why are your drums dead? And are you sure about this?" And it it, it freaked me out because I was like, yep. "Oh my god!" Simon said you know you've got a pillow in your bass drum it's like why yeah and so i then started to play all open yeah and I, and and then um and then you got gavin harrison yeah gavin has got a great big pillow in his bass drum and i was watching an interview with him and he says um if you're playing a big gig and i was playing really quite big gigs back then yeah he said it doesn't matter whether you're open tuned or shut he said the room's gonna you know as soon as you've mic that kit up and yeah. it goes to the pa it's gonna go boom <laughs> Yeah, so he's like, easier, and I just it? thought, my God, two completely valid opinions, yeah. two amazing drummers, two amazing bass drum sounds, totally opposing each other, yeah. and it, it's everything's like that. Everything, Everything. in music is like yeah. that, and you've got there's no rules, and it's down to your taste. <laughs> it's down, and the thing is, is if you get into this sort of iconic John Bonham's the best, you actually shut your taste down. Yes. And so yes. what, what you're saying about all this afro cuban stuff, you know, I love it. You're really into it. Yeah. Go and check it out and, and, yeah. and assimilate. Well, I can never play it. Uh, you know, I've learned all of it. I'm, I'm learning it, and I'll never be able to really play it, but it brings something into everything I do. So even my inability to play a decent songo brings something into when I'm playing a funk groove, when I'm playing, you know, all the Tony Allen stuff. I don't know if I'll ever play Afrobeat in a band, but all of that brings something into every funky thing that I play, um, you know, reggae, I've spent a lot of time with reggae and old ska music, the original, you know, Scatolites and all of that stuff. And again, I, well, actually I've played sessions uh, with reggae and, and played live. So I'm, I'm sort of very settled with that, but it brings, you know, when I then play rock music, it's, it's enriched what I can do. And yeah, again, when you're teaching your students swing, it's the most opening 
opportunity to like learn swing. And it's fine. We start with rock and then you learn swing. I don't know what it would mean like in the 50s, you came along with a pair of sticks and they made you go rat a tat on a practice pad for a year. And then they got a cymbal out and got you going dang, 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 dang. And- I, I could do, talk to you for two hours on why the jazz swing beat is so important in terms yeah. of the history of drums, how all drumming is based upon it. But also, it's like, um, Let's do it. so here's the one tiny example. To, to get students to be able to feel the surface of the drum, mm-hmm. I get them to drop the stick on. And you see, it's like everyone's got almost like a moral in, imperative to play the drum. Yes. And I'm going, yeah, but what what does the drum want to play? So you it's really yeah. hard for them to just drop the stick and let the stick just go bang, you know, like this, yeah. bang, like that. They can't do that. Yes. Eventually, once they do it, what does it play? Yes. It does. It plays a swing. It plays the jazz swing. Needs, uh, yeah. Everyone needs so those it's, it's like when, when my dad was a jazz drummer, when I started playing. Yeah. As much as I was trying to get all my John Bonham beats down, he would make me go into my bedroom with one stick and play a jazz swing. And and I can remember putting on records that were only mid-tempo and I couldn't play them. And eventually yeah. you start to play that jazz swing because you start to let the stick do its own thing. Yeah. And that lesson, it just that's just one thing about the jazz swing. That lesson basically is the fundamental of all technique and then if you look at molar technique where you've got like a whip and then you've got like um, a a full stroke in the middle and then a pull out yeah that is a jazz swing jazz swing is a swung the three molar whips Ah, now now before we go into the next before we go into the next video because there's a thing of of like this is about uh there's certain uh beauty and elegance to that and then there's a place where again a lot of our fellows have turned that into a massive level of overwork oh, but so where, that, that, where this I'd is introducing video, an idea I'm, of a, i'm going to bring yeah. it back to bonham now <laughs> yes. because i once had a guy that student that was really into bonham yeah and i said he'd learned on this the way to play the technique the way to play the drums relax and i'm not teaching this because i want people to play play fast although they will be able to play fast if they learn yeah. that I'm not teaching it so they can play all the rudiments, although they will. I'm teaching it so they don't hurt themselves. Yeah. And then they, then they get a decent sound out of the drum. Because if you're playing tight, you know, all these things that are fundamental about drumming. Yeah. And I said, um, I said, you will see this rather than hearing it. I said, put a video on and just turn the sound off and watch the drums and you yes. will see. This is yes, a really, Andy. anyone who's watched well, this video, try and do it. Yes. And this guy said, who's your favorite drummer? And I, he goes, John Bonham. So I pull out a Bonham video and we turn the sound down. He's watching it. And he goes, mm, that's what's the matter. He goes, his right hand's good, but his left's not, is it, Andy? Like, yeah. No. <laughs> you can see it. Yes. Go and watch that Jeff Wakara video of him uh, demonstrating the, the Rosanna thing and turn off the sound and look at the beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that, uh, the whole, again, this is like. It was a big bottom fan, remember. Yeah. But Devil's advocate, you are. know, he was they a big bottom fan. Yeah. And I, again, I, I want to re re emphasize, I've got nothing against anybody being a Bonham fan, but there are other deities in the uh, deosphere. So a... if if um, if we've established that it would be a good idea to to um, pull down all the statues to. Uh, um, oh, have I done something with my thing? Can you still hear me? Yes. Oh, lovely. I just I just I'm sat on there. my new mic thing and it beeped, <laughs> and it's saying something went wrong. It's I, you're still audible. I'm still it? going. Yeah. yeah. So I think it pulled it uh, somehow. This thing here. Oh, you might have yeah. calendar. It's a very clever. Oh, it's not too clever for me. Anyway, um, that's what yeah, we're, so we're going to pull down really, the statues. That, 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 you're saying it's 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 it, it needs it needs busting. I I, I agree yeah. entirely. I would it, I would it, pull it, down yeah I would pull down some of the statues. I'm happy to have a statue of Piet and Bonham and Kola Yuta. I'm you know, but um, I need I need Ayita Marrera, Kika Freitas, Tony Allen up there. I need Levon up there. Um, you know, I mean. Well, again, here's, a, here's another one that you you. There's a difference between between Vinny and Piet and, and Bonham for me because both of those drummers primarily only played in the band. But the they're both the, yeah, but they're they're in the in the sense of like if you're looking at the conversations our yeah. fellow drummers are having, but Kola Utah is is there's I, a, I, those I, three I, guys I, are getting as, as I, we I get to, to the end of this. I'd like to, I'd like yeah. to put my two penny thing about Kola Utah as well. But with yeah. Piet and Bonham, yes, for me they were the best drummers in Led Zeppelin and Rush. 
Yes. You couldn't have got a better drummer for Led Zeppelin. You couldn't have got a better that they, they just fit those bands. Yes. You, I think Bonham was clever enough to never really step outside Led Zeppelin because I think you would have seen Yeah, like Mitch Mitchell without Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Not a good thing to have ever heard. Yeah. Um I think with Peart, the same thing. Peart, I, I think, especially his drumming on moving pictures, is, is sublime. I I I I it's absolutely perfect beautiful architectural drumming that really sets the standard for modern, modern progressive rock drums architectural I drumming, yeah. but but um he, he, he is not the technical genius that these fans think he no. is no and not i know this because i've spoken to people that were on the uh, again watch the guy with the sound off watch the I'm, guy with the sound off I, I i'm not i can't go any further than this but i yeah. just know he struggled yeah. He struggled on that Buddy Rich thing, and he was like looking at drum- the other drummers that are on there, even quite minor league drummers like the guy from Living Color that was on that. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he, went, he went to lessons with Freddie Gruber. Yeah, he went to lessons with Freddie Gruber to try and deal with some of that stuff, but it was a bit late yeah. in the day for the poor guy. Yeah. yeah. Collie yeah, Uta yeah. is now Collie Uta is, an, is, 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 is he, he's from that world of phenomenal technical drummers, play with Frank yes. Zappa, can yeah. sight read anything, he's got astonishing technique. That those Bonham fans and Piat fans could do well to go and listen to Vinnie Collier and listen to a drummer that is yes. like a hundred times Bonham or Piat. Yeah, uh, you know Collier is that, but Co- I agree it entirely that Collier has has hit all those licks he plays and everything he does yeah. has now become so iconic that it's they're like Vinnieisms. Yeah, and anybody who tries to do anything else will never get judged. In the yeah. same way, and you can't Vinny. touch it, really. You know, that's the thing. You can't, you can't, you can't really touch what he did. Um, you know, and there's, the, but the, again, it's. I'm, I'm really talking about not so much in the quality and style of the drumming as the degree of deification. Uh, and again, there's a couple of other people as well. It'd be very easy to bring up some people who wrote sort of crappy, rudimental books over lockdown, uh, because you know, fair enough. But uh, and stuff where you know they worship. Oh, this guy said something. Oh. Someone said something about this. So, yeah, you know, but I have nothing against anybody loving these people and studying their there, work. There's a, hype, there's a hype there, you see. And yeah. I'll tell you something with Vinny from what I... But this is our primitive tendency it, to deification. I think he he emerges in the 80s. Yeah. Zappa, Joni Mitchell. He's he's flying high. In the early 80s, he makes a whole bunch of albums. By the mid-80s, mid he's completely disappeared and he's playing drums. The best gig he's got is playing drums in the house band on the Joan Rivers TV show. Yeah. So what happened to Vinny? Yeah. And, and in the mid eighties, I can the remember business I, as well as the I, I was reading Rhythm magazine, and somebody wrote a letter in, and then and it was like, "Has anyone heard of this drummer Vinny Collier? Who's astonishing? Check him out on Joe's Garage and sort of play guitar." And he also played on Gino Vanelli's album. So I went and bought those albums early on, way before. Yeah. And, and to me, Vinny was like a secret. Nobody had heard of him. I was like, God, there's this drummer in America, right? Yeah. But I think what Vinny, the thing with Vinny is he then had to learn how to play session drums because he seems to then re-emerge. He joined Sting's band. Yeah. And he's a changed drummer in a way. And that's sort yeah. of a lot of the insanity and fire. And if you go back and look at Vinny playing in 79 with Zappa, the technique's terrible. Yeah. The, it's the astonishing is, yeah. what he's playing. He's yeah. sat about... Eight inches off yeah. the ground. He's, yeah. he's playing like this as tight as yeah. possibly you can. His knees are up by his thing. He's, what he's playing is astonishing. Yeah. He's ingaining everything. He's, you know, he's he's forcing it out. Yeah. So he's not helping his body. He's, no. He's harming himself by by doing that. And again, just, I, I think that Bozio uh, had a similar thing, that you had these very shreddy guys and they didn't have maybe access to enough insight in and again we still don't really but there's not not enough access into insight in how you're using your body and um so yeah a lot of people you know i, I think that's why again this is another one because this is where the whole mola this and gladstone that uh becomes lionized in this way where we we again grab on to this deified idea mm. and um oh mola 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 but we don't really think like what does this mean how is this applied is this useful for you at every turn and you know how does it manifest? But I'm just thinking, um, have we maybe, uh, you know, reached the um apex no, I think of so. The, I think, the I mean, we, we've, we've moved on to these wider areas. Yeah, and there's other potential. Happened, there's uh, potential here I think, for other videos. I think anybody who's watching it, I'm a drum teacher, you're a drum teacher. Any yeah. any of the Bonham fans are watching it, you, they're probably thinking, these guys are now getting quite into deep technical discussions. And that's yes. the whole point. 
if you're measuring these guys that you're worshiping on a technical level yep. you may not know enough about technique to actually judge who is great and who isn't great yeah. which and is the, the next other video thing no one I'd knows like anything about on, technique the, the, the thing i'd like to finish on and yeah. this came from my experience of playing with robert there are session drummers out there that can play absolutely anything and we've never heard of them Yes. And they get pulled in. In Nashville, there's session drummers that can play anything. They can read anything. They yeah. can technically play anything. But their virtuosity comes out in that when they play on the record, they disappear into the record. Yeah. And that was the biggest thing I learned from playing with Robert, that these drummers that I worshipped that were very obviously fantastic drummers because they played in bands that were vehicles for them to basically show off. They had character. Yeah. But, but there's another type of drummer that you just hit the nail on the head character does not come from chops no uh, the 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 if 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 you get called to to sight read a 20 minute piece for the latest soundtrack of a film that's virtuosity yes you know so in the uk like a drummer like ralph salmon ralph salmon you know, they're just phenomenal being. drummers yeah. on, on a level that you can't yeah. get Play yes. anything, throw anything out of them. Neil yes. Wilkinson. These are the yeah. phenomenal drummers. Yes. Right. But they sort of disappear into the track. Whereas yeah. whereas drummers that have any any idiosyncrasies, which is usually their technique is slightly off or they're not, they can actually have a signature sound, which then yes. makes them iconic. And so the whole thing, technically, I feel that the highest level of drumming is drummers that you don't notice and, and I, my drum teacher the great mal garrett who i had a few lessons with and i really based my technical knowledge on he said technically good drummers you can hear when they're technically good he said technically yeah. incredible drummers you can't no oh beautiful i like it and, I, and, that, and I, I thought if i could just throw mal's quote in at the end you know if if you're hearing it you know it's and, and i i Bonham fans, go back and listen to Joe Jones. Go and listen to the arch, you know, go back to the source. I mean, this guy was playing drums in 1930, yeah. basically he invented the hi hats. Yeah. You know, I mean, go listen and to listen all that to Muddy it. Water stuff. Listen to um, you know, um the jump blues, uh Joe Turner. That's where it's all at, you know. All, all those, all those guys. Why well, only like, uh Harris, you know, listen to that. That's really there, the there's technical things. things that have been forgotten in drums that those guys were doing. Yeah. And when you watch those old videos of those old jazz drummers and you can see them almost, almost drumming circular and they're throwing the sticks around in the thing like this while they play, you yeah. think, what's what the hell's going on? You know what? Because they were snare drummers. They were like yeah. four Davillion snare drummers. It's the whole thing changes. And right now at the moment to, to be classed as a drummer, you either got to do a blast beat or sit there playing flat dynamic gospel chops drummings. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what's good now. Yeah. It will change. Yeah. You know, and I'd rather be, if I was a young drummer now, I'd rather be the next drummer that comes out that does my own thing, that changes the world. You know, yeah. that, that's what I'd want to be, not just trying to follow the herd and play the, the measurement game. And yeah, just... absolutely. Because that, that's what's going to sort of stick out and be artistically yeah. valid now in this yeah. miasma of faceless stuff. Okay. I, th I think that winds things up with a beautiful. I'd try my best to do it then. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say Buddy Rich once, by the way. I just like to point that out. So maybe I need to name this why I never talk about Buddy Rich. But um, yeah, I mean, you got that for another video because the, the great yeah. thing about what you're doing here is you're using the very thing that you're critiquing. You're yes. going to have your video up on YouTube that it's says, beautiful. you know, why we shouldn't talk about John Bonham. <laughs> and why we shouldn't talk about Buddy Rich. We're going to watch is, that. The next one. Yeah. So, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Th this is our magical working anyway, yeah. I think. So, so anybody, yeah, thank you very much. That, uh, at least we've admitted it right at the end, you know. You yeah. came here because of the John Bonham. Um, because of the John Bonham. Oh, let's see, let's see. Yeah, admit let's it. see if anybody, if you're watching this still, I, I have, you know, I hold you in the highest esteem, really, my <laughs> my loyal viewer and Andy loyal viewer in particular. Um, do make sure you check out Andy's channel. I'm going to put a link in the description box. Uh, watch Andy's videos. Um, they're all entertaining. I'm, again, I'm not a huge prog rock guy, but every uh, video is entertaining and elucidating. And I'm learning a lot about music and, and how to talk about music as well, I think is good. So go away and listen to, to Andy uh, and subscribe to his channel and sign up for his Patreon and all that good stuff. And you can also do the same for mine, but um, check out Andy. He's, he's worth it. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'm going to sign off and stop the recording now.